human nature with bright and dark shades is the same all over the world. Unhealthy competition and rivalry are found among all people. People across the globe are prone to jealousy and envy at seeing the good being done by others. Even people chosen by God fall prey to this weakness. The culture of competition and rivalry affects many social and even spiritual organizations. Many of us find it difficult to acknowledge the good done by others. Some of us find it hard to admit that others are better than us. Many of us are not open-minded enough to rejoice in the good being done by others. Monopoly and competition are the values that rule the corporate world. Each company competes to establish the monopoly of its products. We see a similar thing happening in the Gospel of Mark chapter 9 verses 38 to 48. The disciples wanted monopoly over the miracles and the good works performed in the name of Jesus. They wanted Jesus to stop the person who was casting out demons. Even those whom Jesus had chosen were not free of jealousy. The apostles thought that they enjoyed an exclusive authority to work miracles. They wanted a monopoly over God's grace. They became intolerant towards the outsider and wanted to stop him. Jesus responds by saying, those who are not against us are for us. Jesus was always quick to acknowledge the good in others. He acknowledged the faith of the Canaanite woman who wanted him to cure his daughter. He readily praised the great acts of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and the Roman centurion whose servant was lying paralyzed at home. Jesus did not hesitate to praise the qualities of the poor widow who dropped two copper coins in the temple treasury or to praise the sinful woman who sat at his feet. Jesus did not consider it below his dignity to give credit to anyone who deserved it. Jealousy was something far from his thoughts. We hear of so many relationships breaking up today because people are becoming more and more intolerant and impatient with one another. Jesus was an extremely tolerant and patient person. He accepted all kinds of people into his company and never deprived anyone of his service and of his love. He accepted the Romans, whom the Jews hated, the Samaritans who were considered low caste. He accepted prostitutes and tax collectors who were outcasts. All of these felt home in the company of Jesus. Jesus communicates a great lesson of appreciating the goodness in others, even though they may be very different from us. Jesus teaches us that those who are different from us enrich us. Jesus is asking us today to be tolerant and open-minded and rejoice at the good being done by others. He invites us to see the gifts and talents present in our fellow human beings. Before the coming of Jesus, there were many men and women in every generation who were regarded as prophets and spokespersons for God. In those ancient days, prophets had a very important role. They had a role of reminding the people of the covenant between God and human beings. Prophets stood for the poor, the widow and the orphan, especially when they were weak and vulnerable. Prophets were fearless people who challenged anyone who did wrong, no matter how powerful they were. Jesus added a new dimension and a new meaning to the role of a prophet. He called his disciples to be witnesses he wanted them not only to make his message known, but to show by their lives that they really believed in his message. 
It is sad that when we travel by train these days, we are advised not to interact with strangers and not to accept food and drink from unknown persons. A few years ago, a group of young nursing students was traveling sleeper class by train from Delhi to Trivandrum. They were all excited as they were going home for their first annual vacations. An elderly couple was sitting opposite these young girls. Half an hour into the journey, one of the girls saw signs of a heart attack in the elderly man. At once, she and her companions gave him a cardiac massage. They tried hard to revive him. They tried all their freshly learned nursing skills to save the life of this elderly man. With all their combined efforts, they could keep him alive for only half an hour. By the time the train reached the nearest station and the doctor arrived, the elderly gentleman had passed away. The wife's eyes were filled with tears as she thanked the nursing students for being angels of mercy. The girls were sad for the rest of the journey as they were not able to save the life of that elderly man. The code of conduct demanded that the women should not get involved and keep away from strangers. What was it that inspired these young girls to come to the aid of that elderly couple? They came to the service of the couple unasked and to be unrewarded. We come across such noble people who have a heart and time for others. They are the true prophetic witnesses. Deeds do not have to be big in order to be of help and comfort to the person for whom they are done. Mother Teresa believed in doing little deeds of charity, not mighty miracles. Let us pray for the grace to become aware and recognize the moments and opportunities to do good in our lives. Let us ask God to help us to be more tolerant and to see the goodness in others. By doing so, we free our hearts to give glory to God and God alone, from whom all good things come. Amen.